Welcome back, y'all. This is uh, going to be a relatively short video. It's an impromptu video. We had some cold temperatures last night, and I got to find out what the performance of the building is. Um, I did all I could uh, reasonably to insulate these walls, as I've uh, talked to you about in previous videos. And this, uh, this wall right here is a concrete wall with rainwater on the other side of it. Right now, the level of the rainwater is about here. And so that's a thermal mass wall. And so the uh, idea of this building is that that thermal mass can moderate the temperatures in this well-insulated building. And there will be heat generated by the inverters. And there's been some discussion in the comments about how difficult it will be to cool that. I do have a small mini split for combating the heat in the Texas heat uh, of the summer. But last night we got down to 26 degrees. Oh my God, for us that's cold. Now it's not ice apocalypse last February down to five degrees F cold, but 26 degrees, you know, minus, I guess that's minus four Celsius. So that's cold for us. We had a 20 mile an hour wind, uh, really chilled things down. And when I came out last night, I had not yet put a door lock in. And uh, this is just taped across with some uh, strips of trim tape. Um, but the door was slightly cracked open and those holes were open. And so the temperature of the surfaces inside the building when I came in this morning were about 58 degrees. Now I came out about nine o'clock this morning and closed that off. And when I checked, the temperature of the concrete wall was about 63 degrees, uh, 60, uh, it was about 62 and a half, 63 degrees of this concrete wall, although it has been warmer. So basically, it was losing heat into the space trying to keep it warm, and the surfaces in the room were um, 58, 55 degrees. Uh, it was colder down at the bottom because the cold air was spilling in and spreading across the floor. So it was about 53 degrees here, about 58 degrees here. The door was about 56 degrees, and it was all just because of the air infiltration coming in. So I thought, well, what happens if I close this off? It is now about four o'clock in the afternoon, and these inverters have been making power all day. They've made, uh, the sun's really low or close to the solstice, right? But they've still made about 40 uh, kilowatt hours today, and so they've generated some heat. But let's see how that looks. So the concrete wall, now I, I haven't, th this is just for y'all. I mean, I just, I just came out here to do this. So. 64 and a half, that's kind of what I would expect to see. Maybe 64 to 65 is what I would expect to see on this concrete wall. That's what I've been seeing the last few days. Uh, right, okay, so, so up high, 64. Down lower where there's the water, 65. That makes complete sense to me. There's more thermal mass in that water. Now, this is that uh, dividing wall. Uh, if you watched the previous video that shows how I'm finishing this out. This dividing wall is just a, it's just a temporary, I mean, it's just a uh, intermediate wall. So it is basically the temperature of the room. So 64 degrees, 64 and a half degrees, a little bit higher up the roof, 65 and a half, heat rises, 65. As we come on down towards the wall, 64. Exterior wall, 63 and a half. Fiberglass door filled with insulation, 64, 63. So all within one degree or so, 63, 63 and a half. This is the north wall. It's been taking a 20 mile an hour wind all day. And we've got 64 and a half. 65 as we come on up the wall, 65 and a half. And I'm gonna guess that that is some heat, maybe that's being generated by this, by this uh, 
these inverters. So how much heat are the inverters creating? Because that's going to be a big factor later when we're trying to keep this cool with the mini split. It is bright, sunny, cold day. So the inverters are making a lot of power and um, they're creating a lot of heat as a result. And we're getting right above the inverter, we're getting 72, 73 and a half, 74. Shoot the concrete, it gets cooler above 72. This inverter has 30 250 watt panels on it. This inverter has 18 250 watt panels on it. 70 above, 72 above this inverter. 71, 72 and a half above this one. The ceiling above the inverters, 67 degrees, 68 degrees. Get a little bit further away, 66. So it's a few degrees warmer above the inverters, not a great amount. And since I closed the door and got it sort of sealed off, the whole room is moderated to within one, one and a half degrees of this concrete mass wall. So I think the lowest temperature we saw over here was 63, wasn't it? Yeah, 63 and a half, 63 and a half, and the mass wall is 64 and a half. Oh, I see 65. And um, this is the south exterior wall. 65, it's got sun on it. 64 and a half, 65 degrees. So, north wall, 64 and a half degrees. The walls are very well insulated, all within a degree or so of each other, and the inverters are not contributing a great amount of heat to this uh, building. The the strength, the power of the power of thermal mass walls is really strong. The, the amount of heat that can be held by air is a small amount. And the amount of heat that can be generated by those inverters is also a rather small amount compared to the tremendous amount of heat that can be stored in a thermal mass wall. This is 10, 15,000 gallons of water on the other side of this concrete wall. It can take heat for a long, long time. You're not going to heat up. The amount of BTUs that it takes to heat up, well, a BTU is the amount of energy that it takes to heat one pound of water, one degree. 15,000 gallons of water, that's... Um, that is uh, 12, 120,000 pounds of water. 120,000 pounds of water, one degree, is 120,000 BTUs. So this is a lot of energy that can be absorbed and moderated by this thermal mass wall. Um... Just a slight update, just to keep you up to date. I, I've, been, I've been working on this, but I'm, I'm also working on the, my friend's project, so I haven't made as much progress as I could have if I was just focusing on this one. I was going to put this panel on this wall, as what I reported to you the last time we talked, and I was going to put this disconnect here. But I've changed my mind and I went ahead and cut this panel in here. So now all three of the combiner distribution panels are uh, on the same wall. All fits nicely together. Uh, my friend's going to benefit from the fact that I've done this because this is the grid panel. This is the load panel. This is the generator panel. Well, now that I've done this, I'll, I'll do hers different because... In the inverter, this is the grid, the generator, and the load. Wouldn't it be nice if this was the grid, 
generator and load, but didn't have it planned quite that way. Plus the grid panel, if this, if this was the grid panel, it would be very nice because it would be right above the um, disconnect, or actually it's a transfer switch that is a bypass. So this switch back basically can bypass this entire system and just take the grid bring it in and back right back out to the house and bypass all of this, which would be good to do in the same general vicinity as the grid panel. But, all right. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna let you go. People want 10 minute videos. Well, you got an 11 minute video. Take care y'all. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.